Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the ThinkPad 13 from Lenovo. And this is something we looked at about a year ago. This is their new 2017 edition. And I was really quite fond of last year's model because it was very affordable. It started at $500 with an i3 processor. Uh, this new one costs a lot more and in some cases even more than that, depending on how you configure it. So the value proposition isn't as good on this one, but we will take a look at it and see how it compares to last year's edition in just a second. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's step through the hardware now. This is going to be a little bit more complex to talk about pricing than last year's version. So this starts now at $699. There's also a silver version available. Unlike last year, where for about $500 or so, you got an i3 processor. Now the entry model has a Celeron. It's the uh, lower end Celeron chip that is still within the KB Lake architecture. So it's faster than a lot of those really cheap computers we look at that also have Celerons. It's a faster version of that, but it is still much slower than the i3, i5, i7 chip. So uh, this one as configured has the i3 built in. That will add $200 to the price. If you want the i5, you got to pay an additional $300. This one has four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a 128 gigabyte SSD, and there's a few other options that were added to this one. So unlike last year where you got a 1080p display as part of the deal, on this one now the 1080p is optional and it's an extra $120, but as a bonus it is a touch screen unlike last year's version. So you do get uh, the ability to use your fingers on your screen if you wish and move things around here. And what's cool about the screen, at least the touch screen, is that it is a matte finish. So it doesn't really look like a touch screen, but it is. So that's nice, but you do have to pay extra for that. Uh, the display that comes on the base model or any model that you choose without the 1080p display is a TN720p display. So it's in the same size here, but uh, rather low resolution and not the best looking display. So you're really going to get a, a pretty cheap looking device for that entry level price, which is unfortunate because last year you did get uh, so much more to it. Now they did add a few things on the keyboard side of the uh, equation here. So they did add a fingerprint reader, uh, which is one of those slide fingerprint readers that the ThinkPads have had for a very long time. Uh, that adds another $20. If you want a backlit keyboard, that's an additional $40. So there are a bunch of little options that you have to kind of add on to the mix here, and it's not as uh, complete as it was before. The screen, like last year, does go all the way back down to your desk, but this is not a two-in-one. So this is as far as the screen goes, but you do have a lot of flexibility with the hinge here as to where you want to adjust things. Now, on the surface, though, it is a ThinkPad and it's very sturdy. It is made out of plastic, but it feels like it'll hold up quite well. The keyboard is awesome, as they always are on these ThinkPads, so really good travel to the keys. Nice size keys, very, very nice to type on. The trackpad is an improvement over last year's trackpad, which is something I did not like about the uh, prior edition. So you have a click pad here, and then you also have that little nub thing here as well, like all ThinkPads have had since the beginning of time, so they have kept a lot of the tradition alive there. On the side here, you've got your power input. This is a docking connector. They have a dock available that will allow you to dock the notebook into a monitor and that kind of thing, so you have that as an option. You have a USB 3 port here. Uh, this is not a fanless device, so the i3 that is in this one, uh, as well as all the chips that you might uh, choose from for this particular computer, will have a fan on there. It's not very loud, but it does run uh, when it needs to. Uh, on the other side here, you've got a card reader. I do believe the card sits all the way inside of it, so if you do want to augment some of the storage on here, you can do that. Uh, you also have a headphone microphone jack over here, two more USB 3 ports, an HDMI out, and they also have a USB Type-C port. This is not Thunderbolt, uh, but it is a full-service USB-C port, so it does power, it does data, and it does video. So you do have a functional port here on the side. Some of the prior Lenovo laptops did not do power, but this one does it all, and there's a Kensington lock here for locking it down on the desk. Uh, the sound out of it is pretty good. It does uh, come out of the bottom here, but it does sound pretty nice. You've got two stereo speakers on the left and the right-hand side of the computer. It will vary based on uh, what surface it's on, but it does sound pretty good, and overall, I really do like the look and feel of this. This, uh, especially with the 1080p display. I probably wouldn't have the same opinion of the lower cost display that is available for it. So it's definitely not as much computer as it was a year ago. 
Weight wise, it is 3.17 pounds or 1.44 kilograms, so not all that heavy. The battery life is pretty good on it, like it was last year, about eight to nine hours doing uh, most tasks, you know, things like email and word processing and spreadsheets and that kind of thing. If you start playing games or watching a lot of video on it, uh, that battery life might get reduced a bit, but you can certainly get uh, pretty much a full workday out of this thing without having to plug it in. So that is the hardware. Let's see how it performs. All right, so we'll kick things off with my YouTube channel here. We'll visit my 1080p 60 frames per second file and see how it plays back on the device here. So I'll uh, run our stats for nerds here. You saw how fast it comes up. It is running with wireless AC, of course. So if you've got the uh, latest and greatest router on your network, you should be able to take advantage of that. I'm not seeing any drop frames here. I did test this earlier as well and had no issues there. So I think for uh, basic web browsing, you're going to do fine. We'll look at the NASA website real quick as well and uh, check out what Cassini is doing near Saturn. It got in between Saturn and its rings today. That's pretty exciting. And you can see uh, how fast everything loads up on here. This one again has the i3 processor, which will give you a uh, pretty snappy and zippy performance on here. And I'm quite pleased with the display. It's not as bright as I would like it to be. So it isn't as bright as some other Lenovo displays are out there, but uh, it's decent enough. And uh, the viewing angles are pretty good again, because you've got uh, the IPS display driving this. However, the less expensive display will not look as good as this one. In fact, it won't be nearly as good. So I think there is a, a good reason if you are in the market for this, maybe to spend that extra $120 or so for this touch display because you do get more resolution and better viewing angles. And on the Octane benchmark test running in Google Chrome, I got a score of 20,212, which actually puts it below what we got from last year's Lenovo ThinkPad 13, which came in at 22,194. My theory is that uh, the RAM in this particular computer, it's four gigabytes. I think the one they sent me last year had eight gigabytes, which would uh, in many cases have the RAM in what's called a dual channel configuration, where you've got uh, two sticks of RAM that can run a little faster together than one stick will on its own uh, inside of this computer. This will make a big difference when we look at uh, some of the graphics performance in a minute. So I think that might be the reason why this one's a little slower, but also of note is that the Octane benchmark test has been retired as of last week, so it's no longer being updated either. So I'll be uh, moving over to a different test called the speedometer to see uh, how all of these things stack up. And if you're curious, this one scored 86.6 on that test. I'll be uh, adding this to my benchmark spreadsheets. You can find it lon.tv slash benchmark so you can get a feel for how this one compares as I add a few more to the uh, list later this week after running that test on a few more computers that I have in the archive here. But uh, overall, I was surprised, though, that we did get a lower score on here. But I think it might be how the RAM is configured, because that's going to impact our game test in just a second. Now, on the Microsoft Word test that we usually do, it's perfectly fine. It feels just as quick as I've seen other i3 processors run, even some of the uh, fourth generation chips. We're now up to the seventh generation. So doing all the things that this computer is designed for, web browsing, spreadsheets, word processing, some light uh, desktop publishing like this, I don't think you'll have any issues with uh, doing those tasks on this computer. Now, as I mentioned, this is not a gaming machine, but it does play games, casual games mostly, and you can run things like Minecraft here at a pretty decent frame rate. We're getting comfortably above 30 frames per second, sometimes going up a little bit higher. I am running the Optifine Performance Enhancing Plugin here, which gives us a bit of a performance boost, but uh, overall, it's good enough. I think you'll again see better performance if you slide in another stick of RAM inside to get into that dual channel mode that I mentioned. But uh, again, playable for casual stuff, but I would not consider running any uh, AAA titles on it. And I was able to get Rocket League to work on this device at 1080p, but with all the settings turned down, of course, and that's been one of the things we've been seeing on some of these KB Lake chips is that we can push things a little bit further with this version of the Intel processor. So I'm getting about high 20s to mid 30s for frame rate, depending on what's going on in the game. So not bad, and it's not as good as it could be, because again, this particular laptop was configured in single channel configuration for its memory. And this is one area where having dual channel, once again, uh, makes a big difference. Now, I did run the 3D Mark CloudGate test, and on that one, we got a score of 4,739, which puts it very close to what we saw with last year's model. But I think if we had that second channel of RAM, uh, we would see dramatically better graphics performance than what we're seeing here. So adding that little RAM chip uh, will make a big difference for gaming. But again, this is not something I would recommend to gamers.
Now, one thing these Kaby Lake processors can do quite well is play back high-definition video, including things like this Blu-ray MKV file, so we're not skipping any frames. It's able to keep up and play back some pretty high bitrate video without any problems here. But let me go uh, over to something a little more demanding, which is this Jellyfish file. I'll put a link to where you can find these in the video description. Uh, this is a 140 megabits per second 4K file. This is what's going to be found on the new uh, 4K Blu-ray discs that are out there. Normally, this will choke a uh, uh, lower end laptop and this one once it gets going is able to keep up with it without issue. It did skip a few frames at the outset. I typically don't see any skip frames at all on the i5 version of this chip. I'm seeing a few here or there with this i3, but uh, by and large, it's able to play back some really high-end stuff. In fact, uh, more video than you need for its 1080p display, but it does give you an idea as to how well it can use its hardware to decode video. And again, that's something these KB Lake chips do quite well. So all in, this 2017 second generation version of last year's laptop is about the same in performance, maybe a few tweaks here or there, but it costs a lot more for the same hardware, which was really disappointing. I thought uh, last year's model was almost too good to be true, and perhaps it was because you got a really decent computer with a 1080p display, the ThinkPad ruggedness for only about 500 bucks. Uh, this year, you're going to be spending a lot more, especially if you want to get the 1080p display and an i3 processor built in. They still are selling the Chrome OS version of this. They have a Chromebook version of this ThinkPad that is is still around that $500 price tag with a 1080p display on board. So if you are not in need of Windows, that might be worth looking at because you pretty much get the whole package here, but uh, with Chrome OS running for a little less money. But you are definitely going to be spending a lot more on the ThinkPad 13 this year than you did last year. This is Lon Seipen. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.